Welcome. Today we'll review our guide on how to use your EcoFlow battery to survive in place. This video is brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Design and Engineering at the University of Colorado, Denver. As part of our Emergency Preparedness Program, in partnership with the Colorado Department of Healthcare Policy and Financing. In this video, we'll go over how to effectively incorporate your EcoFlow battery into your emergency plan for power outages. We'll walk you through these simple steps. Setting up your battery, identifying what devices you'll need, calculating your power needs, prioritizing your power needs, and making a plan for extended outages. So, why is backup battery power so important? Backup battery power is crucial in providing electricity during emergencies when the main power grid fails. Backup battery power allows necessary devices and systems like lighting, communication, and medical equipment to continue working. Having a minimum 72-hour supply of backup battery power gives you time to assess the situation, seek assistance, and make necessary arrangements until regular power is restored. In this video, we'll talk about general strategies to extend the amount of time you can survive in place during a power outage. However, our recommendations are not intended to replace medical advice from your doctor. If you have questions about your specific medical needs or devices, please contact your healthcare provider or medical device manufacturer. Let's go over step one, setting up your battery. Before we get into making a plan for power outages, it's important to make sure you understand how the battery works and choose a convenient location to set it up. If you haven't already, please check out our videos on how to use the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max and how to use the EcoFlow Delta Pro. We're only going over a few important reminders in this section, whereas our other videos provide a lot more in-depth information. As you set up your battery, please remember the batteries are very heavy, so you may need to ask someone to help with unpacking and setting up your battery. When choosing a location, look for a place in your house where your battery can remain plugged in at all times and in the same room as your most important devices. This will likely be your bedroom or wherever you use your medical devices. Once your battery is charging and your devices are plugged in, make sure to turn on the AC ports and leave them on. By following these tips, your devices will have uninterrupted power during outages. If you plan to use the EcoFlow app to remotely monitor and control your battery, make sure your internet router is also connected to your battery. Depending on the location of your router, you might need to move the router closer to the battery or use an extension cord during power outages. Now, let's go over step two, identifying which devices you'll need in an emergency. Before you continue, we highly recommend using the power prioritization sheet to help you organize and prioritize your power needs. Depending on what works best for you, you can access this document in a few ways. You can download the Microsoft Excel document and fill it out on your computer. You can make a copy of the document and fill it out using Google Sheets. Or you can print it out and fill it out by hand. Let's look at the worksheet in more detail. There are sections for the names of your devices and how often you use them. 
whether the device has options for an internal, external, or other form of battery, and if there's an alternative way to charge the device or a low-tech solution. These factors will impact how you prioritize each device. As we go through the rest of this video, we'll walk you through each of these columns in more detail. Once you've filled out the worksheet, we recommend printing it and storing it with your battery. That way, you can easily reference it as needed during an emergency. Now, we'll review common home medical devices you may need to power during an emergency. You can use this list as a starting point to help you identify the devices you'll need in an emergency. You can add the devices that apply to you to your power prioritization worksheet and write in additional devices as needed. I won't read the entire list, but feel free to pause this video or refer to the PDF as you fill out your worksheet. As you are considering some of the most important devices, it's important to remember if you intend to use the EcoFlow app to monitor your battery remotely, Wi-Fi is crucial. And plugging your internet router into your battery is a high priority. If this applies to you, you can add your router to your device list. Next, let's go over other considerations for what you'll need to survive in place during an emergency. We'll be using the C-MIST framework. This is a tool for identifying needs that must be considered in planning for a disaster or emergency. C-MIST stands for Communication, Maintaining Health, Independence, Support and Safety, and Transportation. In this section, we'll go over each of these categories and ask brainstorming questions to help you consider what you'll need during an extended power outage. As we go through this section, please continue to add devices to your power prioritization worksheet. We'll start with C, which stands for communication. What types of devices do you use for communication? For example, will you need to charge your smartphone or laptop? What do you need to communicate with your personal support network and emergency services? Are there any other devices that you might need? Next, M stands for maintaining health. Other than those listed on the first page of this section, are there any devices you need to help you stay healthy while surviving in place? What do you need to monitor and maintain your health? Do you use things like medication reminders, a blood pressure cuff, a pulse oximeter, or a smart health watch? What do you need to minimize preventable health conditions? For example, do you have a first aid kit, hygiene kit, access to clean water, and ways to prepare food during a power outage. Next, I stands for independence. What do you and those you care for need to remain independent? Do you use mobility devices, assistive technology, or vision and or communication aids? Potential examples include a power wheelchair, mobility scooter, hearing aids, cochlear implants, speech generating devices, and smart home devices. Next, S stands for safety and support. What do you need to keep yourself safe during a power outage? This could include emergency lighting, flashlights, smoke detectors, and digital alarms and or reminders. Finally, T stands for transportation. What do you need to access personal transportation and navigation? For example, you might need your smartphone or other GPS device for navigation or to call someone to pick you up. Do you have a car? 
If yes, what do you need in order to load your belongings and essential medical devices into your vehicle? This might include garage door openers and keyless entry devices. The examples we've included are just to get you started. If you think of any other devices you need to survive in place, you can add them to your worksheet as well. Now, let's go over step three, calculating your power needs. By using the list of devices you've created in your power prioritization worksheet, we can now consider other factors that will impact how long your battery or batteries will last. Number of devices. If you have a large number of devices that you need to power, your battery won't last as long. Days per week and hours per day. If you use a device continuously, it will draw more power. If you use it intermittently, it will use less power. As you calculate your power needs, remember, devices may use different amounts of power depending on how they are used. Think of an appliance, like an electric kettle or a blender. When it's plugged in, but not in use, it uses very little power. When you are boiling water or making a smoothie, it uses a lot more power. Battery availability. When calculating your power needs, consider all types of batteries available to you and their capacity. This can include internal and external batteries, along with your EcoFlow battery. Settings, active versus resting. If you use respiratory devices, they will pull different amounts of power depending on whether they are set for active or resting use. Elevation. Elevation impacts air pressure. So, if you are using a respiratory device, for example, a BiPAP or ventilator, at a higher elevation, that means you are likely using a higher setting and higher battery draw. High levels of pressure, high respiratory rate, and high positive end expiratory pressure will all require a higher power draw. To extend your battery's life during a power outage, check with your respiratory therapist to find out the lowest levels you can safely use with your device. We recommend writing that information down and attaching it to your device so that you can safely change the settings during an emergency. Please note, there are a variety of other circumstances that can impact how long your power will last and how long you can survive in place during a power outage. Things like weather, access to food, the age of the battery, or the reason for the power outage can impact how long you can stay at home. While this section can help you estimate how long you have before you need to evacuate, it is only an estimate. It is still essential to have an evacuation plan in place in case something unexpected comes up. Next, let's estimate how much power you need and how long you can survive in place using your EcoFlow battery. There are two options, using our power calculator or conducting your own power audit. We'll go over the power calculator first. Our power calculator allows you to select the medical devices you need to power and how long you'll need to power them each day. It then calculates how long a fully charged battery will last, which can give you an idea of how long you will have before you need to recharge your battery or evacuate. Each type of device requires a different amount of power, which is measured in watts. Our power calculator knows the approximate wattage that each of these devices requires. To give you an example of how this works, let's say you have the Delta Pro battery and you use your CPAP machine for 8 hours every night. 
Under My Devices, select CPAP BiPAP. Choose your utility rate, set hours used per day to 8, and days used per week to 7. Then click Add Device. If you only use the battery for your CPAP machine, the battery will likely last a little over six and a half days. Since the goal is at least 72 hours or three days, this should work well and give you plenty of time. A couple of other reminders. To save power during an outage, we recommend turning off your devices or unplugging them from your battery when not in use. Also, please note that the power calculator can only give an estimate. During a power outage, be sure to check your battery's time and power remaining regularly. Now, we'll go over the second option, conducting your own power audit. This can be a better option if you need to power devices that aren't listed on the power calculator page. To conduct your own power audit, Please follow these steps. 1. Fully charge your battery. 2. Unplug the battery from the wall outlet. 3. Use the battery to power the devices on your power prioritization worksheet for 24 to 48 hours. 4. Based on how much power you've used and how much you have left, calculate how long you'd be able to safely remain at home before recharging the battery or evacuating. If there are devices that you use intermittently or your usage varies, you may want to run this experiment more than once to get an accurate estimate of your needs. If your power audit reveals that your battery will not last for at least 72 hours during a power outage, please review step four carefully to help prioritize your device usage. As you conduct your power audit, please use caution. This is especially true if you have critical medical devices that you need overnight. If you overload the battery, it will automatically shut itself off. You can consider unplugging less important devices overnight to ensure you don't lose power. Please check the remaining battery time carefully before going to sleep. If you have less than 24 hours of power left, stop your power audit and plug in your battery and devices as normal. Next, let's go over step four, prioritizing your power needs and considering alternative solutions. In this section, we'll cover strategies to help you extend the amount of time you can stay at home during a power outage. As we've mentioned before, your EcoFlow battery should provide enough power for you to survive in place for at least 72 hours before needing to evacuate. We'll follow these steps to help you prioritize your devices. 1. Consider the power needs of your devices. 2. Consider alternative power sources. 3. Prioritize which devices to power with your EcoFlow battery. By the end of this section, you should be able to decide which devices are top priority and need to be plugged into your EcoFlow battery, which devices are lower priority and can be unplugged from your EcoFlow battery to preserve power, which devices can use an alternative power source or a different low-tech solution. To help extend the amount of time you can survive in place, please consider the following as you fill out your power prioritization worksheet. How often do you require this device? How many days of the week? And for how many hours each day? If you don't need the device at all times, consider turning it off or unplugging it from your battery. 
Does this device have an internal battery? How many minutes or hours can the device work before it needs to be plugged in? Or how many times can it be used? If yes, keep devices with an internal battery fully charged. That way, you can delay needing to power them with your EcoFlow battery for as long as possible. Is this device able to accept a rechargeable or non-rechargeable external battery? If yes, keep a spare external battery for the device fully charged. That way, you can delay needing to power them with your EcoFlow battery for as long as possible. Are there other ways you can power or charge the device besides plugging it into the wall outlet or your EcoFlow battery? Depending on the devices you need, consider using portable chargers, power banks, power stations, solar chargers, and or hand crank power generators. This can help the power in your EcoFlow battery last longer. Next, let's consider if there are any low-tech or alternative solutions to addressing your basic needs and safety. Here are some examples to help you brainstorm. For lighting, LED flashlight and batteries, battery-powered lantern, light sticks, and or outdoor solar lights. For cooking, propane grill, camping stove, or spare tanks. For shelter, appropriate clothing for the temperature, spare blankets, or screens for windows. For water, one gallon of water per person, per day, for 10 days. For news and communication, hand crank or solar radio, handheld UHF or VHF band transceivers and batteries. For sanitation, bathtub full of water stored in a water bob container, spare five gallon bucket with a toilet lid, trash bags, and or cat litter. Now, we'll go over a variety of potential alternative power sources. Some of these you may already have. If you find that your EcoFlow battery doesn't have enough power for at least three days, investing in some of these options can be a good way to extend your battery life. First, we'll go over options for smaller electronic devices like cell phones, tablets, e-readers, and laptops. You can purchase a variety of small external batteries with USB-A or USB-C ports. Similar to your EcoFlow battery, you can leave these batteries plugged in at all times, so they're available in case of an emergency. Some alternative power sources include portable chargers. These are typically small, lightweight devices that can fit in a pocket or purse. Depending on what you get, they usually have enough power to recharge a smartphone one to three times. These can cost from about $10 to $50. Power banks. These are typically a little larger and hold more power than a portable charger. Depending on what you get, they usually have enough power to charge multiple devices, including smartphones, tablets, and laptops. These can cost from about $20 to $180. Portable power stations. These are large external batteries that can power and charge a variety of devices. This includes the EcoFlow battery line, though there are less powerful options that are smaller and cost less. These vary widely in cost depending on their capacity and features and can range between $150 to $2,500. You can also use renewable sources of power. For example, solar chargers. These are small solar panels that come in various shapes and sizes, 
While they don't have the capacity to power larger devices or recharge your EcoFlow battery, they can provide power for smaller devices in an emergency. These can cost from about $20 to $150. Hand Crank Generators These devices have a crank on the side that you can turn by hand. They come in various sizes and can be used to power small devices during an emergency. These can cost from about $10 to $180. Now, let's talk about medical devices with internal batteries, like ventilators, oxygen concentrators, and feeding systems. If your device has an internal battery, keep it plugged in and fully charged at all times. Check your user manual to see whether your device has an internal battery and how long it should last. Also, keep in mind that the age of the battery may impact how long it can last. Now, let's go over medical devices with external batteries. This can include some ventilators, power wheelchairs, and scooters. If you have a medical device that can accept an external battery, consider purchasing an external battery and keeping it plugged in and charged at all times. You can check your user manual and or contact the vendor of your device to see if your medical device can accept an external battery and what type is recommended. Typically, these batteries work like car batteries and can be hooked up to a trickle charger. Make sure to set up a maintenance schedule to monitor the battery to make sure it's fully charged and functioning properly. Finally, step three is using all the information you've collected in your worksheet to prioritize which devices to power with your EcoFlow battery. The top priority is being able to power your essential medical devices for at least 72 hours. If you have calculated your power needs and your battery isn't sufficient to power your devices for at least 72 hours, you can consider alternative power sources for lower priority devices or other strategies to lower the power needs for your battery. As always, during a power outage, Keep a close eye on your remaining battery life and unplug lower priority devices as needed. High priority are devices related to CMIST. Review your list of devices necessary for communication, maintaining health, independence, support and safety, and transportation. Prioritize any of these devices that cannot use alternative power sources or a low-tech solution. Low priority are any non-essential devices. Deprioritize any devices that are not necessary to survive in place. Devices that have a low-tech alternative or can use an alternative power source. And any devices that are not medically necessary and do not address any of your CMIST needs. Again, please remember, during a power outage, you should monitor your battery's remaining time closely. This will vary greatly as you plug in devices or turn them on or off. Make a plan that is flexible enough to meet your needs, even if unexpected circumstances arise. You should make an evacuation plan that includes the minimal number of hours you need before you have to evacuate. You will need enough time to pack necessary belongings and medical supplies and get to a location that can power the equipment you need. For example, if you know it will take you about six hours to pack up and get to a location with power, make sure you check your remaining battery charge often and begin preparing to leave when you have six hours of power left. Finally, let's go over step five, making a plan for extended power outages. 
Power outages can be unpredictable, so it's important to be prepared in case the power outage lasts more than 72 hours. If a power outage lasts longer than your backup power, you have two options, evacuating or recharging your EcoFlow battery so you can remain at home longer. We recommend making a plan for both options, if possible, so you have more flexibility during an emergency. Before we go into those two options in more depth, here are some other tips for preparing for an emergency. Make sure you are signed up to receive emergency alerts from your county and city jurisdictions. During an emergency, emergency managers will set up evacuation shelters and provide updates on the news or via alerts. These alerts will include the location of the evacuation shelters. These evacuation shelters provide power, food, showers, and support services. Consider registering with your local power company for a medical alert flag. If your power company does a power shutoff for safety reasons, you will be notified with enough time to make alternative plans. Please note, this does not give you priority to turn your power back on or a warning for unplanned power outages. Consider installing a power disruption alarm to alert you when the power goes out. This can be especially important if you rely on medical devices while you are asleep. First, let's go over making an emergency evacuation plan. As a rule of thumb, you should evacuate when you only have four hours of power left in your EcoFlow battery. However, if you rely on medical devices overnight, you may need to evacuate earlier. Do not go to sleep with less than 12 hours of battery left. We recommend that you create a list of important addresses and phone numbers and keep it on your refrigerator or another accessible place. We also recommend that you speak with your friends, family members, neighbors, and or other community members to create a personal support network for emergencies. We also recommend that you ensure that accessible and safe transportation is available to you, whether using your vehicle, public transit, or getting a ride from family or friends. If you need to evacuate with your medical devices, Print out or write down the instructions for use and attach them to your device. Make a list of all the necessary components and label them so nothing gets left behind. Since it can feel hectic during an evacuation, following these steps can help ensure you don't forget anything important. If you'd like more information on creating an emergency evacuation plan, Check out the CIDE's Emergency Preparedness Services course. As always, remember, if you run out of options and need to evacuate, call 911. Depending on the situation, rather than evacuating, you can make a plan to recharge your EcoFlow battery during an extended power outage so you can continue to survive in place at home. There are a few options for recharging your battery during a power outage. First, you can recharge your battery at a public building. You can take your EcoFlow battery with its AC charging cord to certain public buildings to plug it into a wall outlet and charge it. Libraries, rec centers, and certain grocery outlets or hotels may allow you to charge your battery. However, it's important to contact them ahead of time to make sure they will allow you to use their wall outlets. Clinics, hospitals, fire stations, evacuation shelters, or warming, 
Cooling centers are also options. Some hospitals may allow you to use their outlets, but most will want to admit you. For fire stations, you can go as long as there is staff, but if they get called away, you will have to leave. Again, it's important to contact them ahead of time to make sure you can use their wall outlets. Since the batteries are heavy, you may need assistance moving the battery to a location where you can plug it in and charge it. Alternatively, if you have the Delta Pro battery, you can pay to recharge it at an EV charging station. However, please note that this will only work with the Delta Pro. The Delta II Max cannot use EV charging stations. Recharging your battery using solar panels. You can also purchase a 1600 watt solar panel to recharge your EcoFlow battery. That said, these are expensive. The cost can range from about $600 to $5,000. So make sure to check with the manufacturer to make sure the solar panel you purchase will work with your EcoFlow battery. You can also charge your EcoFlow battery from your car while it is on and running. However, we do not recommend this strategy as it will charge slowly and you may run out of gas or drain your battery before you get a useful amount of power. That wraps up our guide to using your EcoFlow battery to survive in place. Thanks for watching.